Welcome to Concordia, my mostly scratch-built layout based on the model railroading classic book by Lynn Westcott, HO Railroad That Grows, except I'm building it in N-Gage. On this episode of Northern Jersey Railroad, I'll be showing you a chapel I scratch-built using the free online software Inkscape. The design is then printed out on paper, glued to various thickness of cardstock, and the walls, roof, and architectural bits are glued together. So let's see the progress. The first step in building the chapel is to print out a paper copy of the design. I don't want to reinvent the railroad engine wheel, so if you're interested in learning how to use Inkscape, I strongly recommend you check out Michael Scott's YouTube channel, Chandwell, which I'll link to below. He has numerous tutorials showing step-by-step -step how to use the program, and design your own buildings and structures. They're what I use to design and build the chapel. So looking at your paper copy, decide if any changes are needed, and once you're happy with the final design, print out another copy, but this time glue it to a cereal box to get a feel for what the actual building will look like on your layout. This is another building I made, a row of merchant shops, and here I'm taking the printout of the buildings and tracing a general outline onto a cereal box that I'll then use a glue stick to apply a labor, layer of glue. You want to make sure it's fully covered so the paper completely sticks to the cardstock and doesn't pull off later on. Then you want to carefully roll out your design on the glued up area and smooth out any bumps or bubbles that may form. I haven't had that happen yet, but you want to make sure that doesn't happen. It'll ruin the look of your design, especially for the final product. And then once it's glued, let the glue set up for about an hour or two, and then begin uh, cutting it out. You can use an X-Acto knife, which is what I used when I started, but Michael and others who scratch build use a scalpel and number 10A blades. I finally got one off of Amazon, and it's remarkable the difference in the cut. I highly recommend you get one too. Once you have it cut out, you can assemble your card mock-up to see your design, but as you can see here, I forgot to add the sidewall to my merchant's row building. That's okay. <laughs> you can go back into Inkscape and fix any final details you need or want to add, like a wall. Then the fun begins, adding the textures and features to the inside and outside of your building. Here is the inside of the laundry, barbershop, and general store, along with the walls to the second floor apartment. But back to the chapel. I hadn't filmed any of those previous steps for this build, so I wanted to show you what was involved. But now I've attached the outside texture of the chapel to the gable end wall. You can see I cut out the windows and then slid open the paper to wrap around the wall so that there's no visible card showing in the window frame. It's a really smart and easy way to cover up the cardstock. You can see I've also added some trim boards to the gable end. You can decide how much detail you want to put on your building, but I think more the merrier as architectural details help cast shadow lines uh, that you wouldn't get if you just printed it out with a design and it adds a little more realism to the building. Now here are the inner walls of the chapel along with the parquet marble floor and a large crucifix on one end. No one's ever going to see any of this. So here I wouldn't go overboard and add pews and an altar, though you certainly could. There are just a few things I throw in because I know they'll be there. And then that gantry over the top actually serves two purposes. One is to keep the gable peaks vertical and aligned, but also that's what the steeple is going to be sitting on. The roof will then be cut around the steeple. And last, I'm showing you how the outer wall will be attached to the inner wall once the windows are installed. And here I'm showing you how I'm constructing the steeple. It's built up in three layers, a lower tower, the belfry, and then the steeple, all of which are glued in place. There's also some more trim boards that were added between the lower tower and the belfry to ease the transition between the two uh, areas. And I gotta say, these precision applicator bottles are a godsend, no pun intended. Being able to put on a tiny, precise amount of glue in just the spot you need it has been essential in doing these scratch builds. If you're interested in them, I'll put a link to them and all the tools and supplies I use in the description below. Another thing I couldn't get along without is a magnifying headset to help see all these teeny tiny things. Had I realized just how small N-Gage was before I began, I might not have ever chosen this scale. 
I've got me some sausage fingers, and sometimes when trying to work with these small t details, my hands shake like I've got Parkinson's. The headset I actually got from Harbor Freight Tools. It's like five dollars. They even come with lights on the side, but they're battery operated, so the batteries have long since died. But just being able to uh, see up close has really been a help. Because I don't have a printer, I need to improvise in doing in printing out windows because I can't print them right onto a sticky label as uh, Michael suggests. Uh, so what I do is I print it out on a piece of paper first and then cut out the windows here. I got these windows from the uh, Scale Scenes website. Uh, they have samples of them and I, act I just uh, size them to the size that I need. I draw a rectangle and then uh, resize the window down so that it fits in the rectangle and it makes it uh, the right size and then you can get any style window uh, that you want. Now, the prototype that I'm basing this uh, uh, build off of is uh, had a six over six uh, window. So on the windows, there were six uh, lights up top and six lights at the bottom. I tried that and the dividers, the munions, uh, uh, just uh, uh, were too uh, narrow and uh, tore. So uh, I went with the uh, two over one sash window and that um, that's sufficient. I do have labels though, and these are really old labels. As you can see, they were for a dot matrix printer. So I've had these things for years and years and years. And what I do is I take the window cut out and I just take this glue, wipe the glue on the back so that's well covered. And then I stick it to the, uh, to the label. And I can't see. And then I get the excess off. And then I take and I roll it in and make sure it's well adhered to the label. Then I come in and I cut around uh, the label just so that I'm giving myself a border so that it uh, can attach to the side of the wall. So now I have the window on a sticky label. Now I can bring over my plastic. So I'm just taking the uh, scalpel and I'm peeling off the back of the label here. Sometimes it's tricky. And then I take this, stick it onto the plastic, and then once again, roll it so that there's good adhesion. Gotta say this little thing, considering the sizes that I'm working with, this has worked out really well. Uh, Michael had, uh, used a, uh, a wallpaper seam roller, which is a little bit wider. And they actually wanted like 15 bucks for one of those things, even like eight bucks. And I was like, that's ridiculous. Got this at the dollar store. I think it's some kind of massage thing where you roll it. You supposedly freeze this thing and then you roll it on and it's supposed to help you, but works great for that. <laughs> and I use it to attach all my uh, uh, textures and stuff to cardboard and roll it on there to smooth it out, make sure there's no uh, uh, bumps and bubbles. And now all I do is I cut out the plastic right around the uh, white label. And once you cut it out, you now have a window with the plastic attached to it. So now just have to cut out the black areas of the window. Most of the time I don't cut out 
the uh, window from the uh, plastic here until after I do this. That way this little piece isn't sliding around all over the place. But it usually just takes two or three passes, light passes, to get down to the plastic because you obviously don't want to cut through the plastic. And there you have the window with the mullion in there. And then when you flip it over, it's got the nice white uh, lines in it. And now I just put glue right around the edging and then stick it onto the uh, card. Okay, that was a little bit long winded on the window cutting, but I just wanted to show just how fiddly it was and why I need my magnifying glasses. But here we are getting towards the end. The windows have been installed in the walls, the side walls are up, and the roof has been attached. And that was another bit of fun, cutting out strips of roof shingles, but I think it turned out mostly okay. As you can see, the roof has been cut around the steeple too, and a bit of flashing has been installed to keep the rain out. I added more trim around the front doorway framing, the arch door, and those black bits are downspouts. They were a last minute addition because of a calculation error I made, but I think they look fine. So the chapel, it's been coated with a couple of coats of uh, AK's Ultra Matte Varnish, and I think it looks good right there. I was going to have make a little sign out here saying about a chapel, but actually in the uh, 1940s, uh, churches didn't have uh, signs really all that much. The uh, small communities in particular, you know, people went to service every Sunday. They knew what was coming up the following week, so they didn't need to uh, be told. And if they did miss a service... Uh, they could find out from their uh, friends what happened and what's coming up. So signs really only uh, started popping up in the 1960s. Now, of course, today they got all those pithy uh, sayings on them. But in the 1940s, they didn't need uh, the signs, so no signs would be necessary. Now that the uh, chapel is in, though, I'm going to start uh, making... Uh, just some uh, scenic design here. I'm thinking a row of uh, poplars on this side as a windbreak and a noise break from uh, trains passing by um, would probably be good. I was testing uh, some trees and uh, this was just a, a quick test I ran to see how it would uh, work using my uh, new ground covers that I've been making. And it uh, looks like it's going to work out okay. I think that's uh, a decent size for a uh, city city landscape. So dotted along the uh, curb line. We'll probably have a, a number of these trees along Main Street. And then, uh, as I said, over by the uh, church, we'll have some poplars. But that'll be the next video. I'll show uh, how I'm progressing uh, with the uh, ground cover. Okay, thanks for watching.